powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Mike Gill in the Sports Bash. Thanks to Dr. David Chow, the Sports Injury Podcast, as he broke down the Goddard and hurt stuff for us here. We'll take a look at uh, the issues at the bye week. Eight and one. What needs to be fixed? What are some of the things that have been good? Eight and one. They escape with a win over the Cowboys. Adam Kaplan, co-host of Inside the Birds podcast, which you can find on any podcasting platform or on their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds. Eight and one at the bye there. That was a that was a nail biter at the end of that game there, Adam. Mike, one of the most most one of the most intense games that I've seen in a regular season game, and I don't know how long. I, I'm sure your listeners could probably come up with their list. You know what's interesting, Mike? Coming in the week, yeah, hey, it's Dallas Eagles. Are, those of us who are from Philly, it's the biggest rival in all of our sports. Sure, growing up for Mike, for me, with Sixer Celtics was probably 1A, but Cowboys-Eagles was by far the biggest. And th- this game, and I know it wasn't playoffs, I, the intensity was incredible. I, I just, I, I still caught, Mike, I was in shock. In fact, here's a, I'll give you a little bit of an insight here. So, myself, Mosher, and, and Clay Harbor do our post-game show, right? So, we, we, we got into Zoom a little bit early, and you were talking, and my TV feed is ahead of theirs, like 30 seconds. I'm going out of my mind when, the, when uh, just because it was so crazy, when we almost had Miracle in the Meadowlands, not Meadowlands 3, when A.J. Brown ran into Hertz for, on that fumble that was recovered by all team. That can't really happen, you know. That, that's ridiculous. Because I, I, they, they're like, "What do you?" What, they figured it was like a big play, like you know, a touchdown or something. Nope. Because we knew they were going to try to run the clock out. What the hell's going on? Well, you saw what happened. So I, I, it was just, as I said on our, our post game show, if you're an Eagles fan and you're at the game, you probably had four or five heart attacks in the game. <laughs> it was really one of those games, Mike. It, it just was unbelievable and inexcusable what the Cowboys do, but as Jason Avon said, the Cowboys the Cowboys were cowboying. That's what they do. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the Cowboys just come down and have – it's like the Eagles kept handing them opportunities to win that game, and Dallas couldn't seal the I deal. Know. Crazy. Yeah. That, that's actually – but, Mike, that's, that's what happened, you know, to be honest with you. They had every, everything – Right, handed right to him. And then, and I was just talking to, talking to John T. Filippo, the former Eagles quarterback coach. John brought up a very good point because John, as a guy who's coached quarterbacks and, and been an offense coordinator, he knows that throw, the, that, that last throw by Dak Prescott, has to go in the end zone. For, you don't know why it didn't, but you have to throw the ball in the end zone. Look, you could get, at, wor- you know, at worst, it's incomplete. Maybe you got a pass interference. It's, it's ball at the one. But how that ball was thrown short, I'll, I'll never understand. Well, um, yeah, I mean, and Philadelphia gets up with probably their best win of the season. You like oh. this one or the Miami game? Miami, you know, in the Miami game, look, well, the most, that, that game was dominant. But as far as everything they had to go through here, Mike, the Eagles are the only NFL team without a nickel corner. Think about how ridiculous that is in this day and age. It's not their fault. The top two guys are out. I mean, what are you going to do with Maddox and McPherson out? Well, what can you do? Now, you wish they would have made a trade for one. I understand, as I report for Pro Football Network, just the cost of, of trying to acquire a cornerback at the trade deadline last Tuesday, the 31st, was very high. And, okay, I know they looked into it, but it didn't happen. And Bradley Rubin, I guess, said via social media he's going to be back after the buy, and that's great. But, Mike, think about this. When Roby's back and, and, and a, a nickel corner is considered a starter, that means four out of five starters will be 30 years or older in the secondary. That's, that's like unheard of in today's NFL. And that's the thing that you, you worry about. And the, 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 the corners, who were obviously very good last season, they're not playing at that same level, and that's you know, what part of the problem. All right. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, with Adam Kaplan here from the Inside the Birds podcast, some issues at the bye week. Now, self-scouting, go in the room. What do we got to get better at? What are some of the things that this team needs to kind of evaluate, tweak, and get better for this brutal five-game stretch? The offensive line, look, Cam Jurgens. I would think, because he did practice a bit last week, you would think he would be back after the bye. I'd be very surprised if he's not. So 
that is part of why the running game has not been consistently explosive as it was earlier this season. We're talking about traditional run game. It hasn't been. We, 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 we all see it, Mike. The lack of explosive plays from the run game. We're talking about traditional running game, not RPO. I mean, not, not um, you know, bubble screen or um, a ghost motion, the handoff, whatever the case is, not a trick play. We're talking about the traditional running game. They've got to be better in that area. I found a comical. It's like spinning the wheel. And, okay, let's give Rashad Penny the start for the second half of the game, and then we're going to take him out after two carries. Like, that, that was funny. You know, that, was, that, was, that game had so many different storylines, by the way. That was one when we talk about the running game. He's got explosiveness, but these coaches clearly don't want to use him. I mean, we don't need to guess. They've told, you, they've told us this all season. They won't play him. And they had to, in a way, well, he was the third back, Mike, and they put him in there. So going forward, Mike, if you're not going to use Rashad Penny, this is why I brought up Penny's name, figure out a way to get more explosive. Now, again, getting Cam Jurgens back, and they have to look at the tape and figure it out on the cut-ups. Then they, this, is, this is really important to get Hurts off of his feet. It's his left knee. You saw him bang it up in the, this, left, this last game again. Get him off his feet for a week and a half until you have to practice. Following the bye. And now, oh, by the way, Mike, they don't play until November 20th, so they're gonna, they, their, their practice week won't start until that, that Thursday. When I say the practice week, the, the normal practice schedule will not be – it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday that week, and they play at Monday night, on Monday night at the Chiefs. So they've got a chance here to get him off his feet for a while. This will really help him. And then the other one, obviously, is, is getting Goddard get, – actually, two more. With, with Goddard, Mike, we saw this last year with Calcaterra. And Stoll, remember, they did a nice job, obviously. They're, they're not Dallas Goddard. But they've got to figure out, and, and the bye came at the right time, other than getting the guys rest or banged up, is it, kind of figuring how they're going to have to do this. It's a four- to six-week injury, as I understand it, and recovery, and, and he's got to get clear for contact and all that. So, but I, what did Dr. David Chow say, by the way? What, what did he? What did he give a timeline? Yeah, he thought with Goddard the way he saw it. If there's, he, he said, depends if there is he getting surgery or not getting surgery. That hasn't been a hundred percent clear. It said it was surgery was likely. Have you heard that? He was supposed to get it, and I have not heard. Yeah, it's a good point. I have not heard. So we're going to look into that for our next show. But yeah, and he uh, said he thought if there was if it was just a regular clean break that he should be good within four to six weeks. That that yeah. no matter what he should play at some point this season, even if it's a oh, surgery situation. Yeah, even if it's yeah, we're we're told pretty strongly. Even if he has surgery, it's going to be he's going to be back for the end of the yes. regular season. But. You know, they're going to have to jimmy-rig this thing like they did last year. I thought the coaches did a great job of, of, of getting an, all that they could out of Stahl, and particularly Calcaterra, who's a better athlete. So that's what they're going to have to do. Now, here's the thing, like, remember, on injury reserve, it's games, not weeks. So putting him on IR this week would not have any impact on, on him coming back because it, it wouldn't count this week because there's no game being played. So there's really nothing to be done here this week in terms of his roster spot. Now, they could sign a tight end on the street, or they could sign like someone like Tyree Jackson off the Giants practice squad, which is something that would make a lot of sense. And obviously, he, he knows the offense. That would help. And, and getting him back during the bye would be smart. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and then the other one, Mike, is obviously the number one issue. Now, we mentioned Bradley Roby saying he's going to be back after the bye. And that's fine. If I'm the Eagles, I don't depend a 31-year-old slot corner for the rest of the season in playoffs. They, got, they really have to work players out during the bye or when they come back after the bye and, and work out slot corners. And, and, and Bryce Callahan's out there, who, by the way, played in the Fangio system. He'd be a great one. He's had a lot of foot injuries in his career, but he's, he's an older player. Well, I don't know why they're not working him out. At least work the guy out. I, I, don't, I don't understand why they're, they're not doing that. But he would be a guy that would make some sense. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But bottom line is, Mike, they cannot be done looking at that slot position even when Roby comes back. There would be a mistake not to reconsider the depth of that position because they've worked. I mean, if you count the guys on the practice squad who were, who were brought up and they, who technically played nickel a little bit, you're talking about eight or nine guys that played nickel this season. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about the first hour of the show, Adam. It's Slay, Byard, Blankenship, Roby and Bradbury have not played one snap ever together. So you're asking those guys mm. to come in and play wow. with no communication, never have played together, and then hoping that none of them get hurt after we just saw Slay and Bradbury have to miss plays in the last game. Blankenship has missed games, and your your slot position has missed multiple games. Mike, let, let, let's 
could, before we get out of here, I just want to give you an idea of, of what's coming here. So week 11 at the Chiefs. Yes, the Chiefs are not great at receiver, but it's all by formation variation. Andy Reid will use the middle of the field, and, and so will Mike Kafka, who's there's an OC. Andy will call the place. You know they'll go after that. Stephon Diggs, the Eagles will host the Bills in, in week 12. You know Josh Allen's an aggressive thrower. Stephon Diggs will play inside. We're going to talk to John Filippo about that next week uh, when they play the Bills leading up. We'll talk to John about because uh, he coached Stephon Diggs in 2018, so he knows his, he knows his game. Oh, by the way, one of the best play callers in the last 20 years, the week after, when the Eagles host the, 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 the Niners and Debo Samuel, who will line up inside. Brandon Ayuk, who will line up inside. Oh, guess who they face in week 14? Oops, the Cowboys again. Then, then week 15, Tyler Lockett, uh, who could line up inside or outside in week 15. So, Mike, they're still, look, they, I give them all the credit in the world. Let's not be so negative. They, they, they're 8 1, second year in a row at eight, after nine games that they're 8 1. That's incredible. I do want to. I do want to make that point because after everything they've been through, Mike, physically way worse injury situation than last season. To be eight and one, you got to give these coaches and players credit. I, I get it. Maybe they got a little lucky and Cowboys were cowboying, but look how they dominated the Dolphins, held them to ten offensive points, found a way to win against Dallas. Heart and heart and soul game, heart, blood and guts game. That's pretty incredible out the buy here. All right, Adam Kaplan, don't forget, uh, check out the Inside the Birds podcast, which you can find on any podcasting platform or on their YouTube channel. Just search Inside the Birds and uh, the bye week here and then that stretch of games with Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas, and I guess we could throw Seattle in the mix of five playoff teams coming up. We're going to find out a lot about this team if we haven't found out enough after nine, right? And, Mike, and then to close the season out, now that's when the schedule gets great. Home against the Giants, home against the lowly Cardinals who just activated Kyler Murray off of uh, PUP, and he will start this week. And then at the Giants, and that, that game could be at any time. It's just, it, boy, can you imagine if they have not lost another game in, in, until week 16 at home against the Giants? That would be incredible. This, is, this has been really fun, Mike. This, and by the way, the Eagles are undefeated at home. This has been pretty incredible what they've got accomplished, but uh, I think the bike came at the perfect time, to be honest with you. Yeah, this is a good spot here. We'll hope to see Goddard back some point, and, of course, Hurts get himself healthy. Adam, we'll see you on Friday. That sounds good. Thank you. All right, Adam Kaplan, everybody here from uh, the Inside the Birds podcast here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN.